All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another exciting lecture for international business. And today we're going to take a look at a little economics and break down comparative versus absolute advantage. This is really going to help us explain exactly why countries trade with who they do or why they trade, period. So make sure you get out your notes, you follow the storm philosophy, sit back and enjoy. So let's take a look at what we're going to achieve today. We're going to identify again why countries trade, revisit those benefits that we looked at before. We're going to identify opportunity costs, and this is really what lays the foundation for the rest of our discussion. Then we're going to compare comparative advantage, then absolute advantage, and then take a look at real life. How does this play out? So why trade? Remember these from before our previous lecture, the benefits of international trade? Well, it all has to do with increasing consumer choice and satisfaction, improving the standard of living, and hopefully the path to world peace is through trade. And for many countries, this is exactly what happens. But for some countries, they might find it difficult to trade. They may not be able to find a dancing partner, but guess what? Everyone can find a dancing partner. Everyone can trade, and we're going to identify that today. Take Canada for instance. Why the heck would Canada trade? We have chemicals and plastics. We have lumber and wood pulp and paper. We have telecommunications devices. We have auto parts. We have aviation and aerospace. We have machinery and equipment. We have oil. We have all sorts of useful, useful goods that we can really use to our advantage. So do we not have everything? Can we not provide for every single citizen in Canada? Well, the answer is yes, but so does the States, so does Japan, so does Great Britain, the United Kingdom, France, and Mexico, and Germany, and China, and even the Netherlands. All of these countries have these things just like we do. So why do we trade? Why do we trade with all of these countries if they have what we have? and they are just well off as we are? Well, the answer is quite simply economic. So let's take a look now. So it all boils down to opportunity cost. What do you give up when you partake in a certain action? So if Canada is going to produce all of these goods, what are they giving up? For yourselves, take for instance you sitting at home watching this lecture video. What else could you be doing? Maybe you could be working. Instead you wanted to really sit down and watch this lecture video. Maybe you could be out socializing with friends, but instead you are sitting here watching this lecture video. There is a cost to watching this video, and this is your opportunity cost. When it comes to trade, this is exactly what countries try to figure out. What is the opportunity cost in terms of what is lost in order to produce the goods that they produce? And so we will use opportunity costs when we talk about absolute advantage. Absolute advantage has to do with di two different trading countries and the ability of one of those countries to use its resources to make a product more effectively or efficiently than the other countries. And vice versa, the other countries could therefore use their resources more efficiently to make certain other products. For instance, Canada and Japan. I would say that you would look at Japan as being very good at making technologies and you look at Canada as being very good at making resources. So this is essentially absolute advantage. Let's take a look now in greater detail. So we are going to keep this very, very simple. Consider Canada making either automobiles or computers. And in a given year, let's say they can make 20 automobiles or 100 computers. That's all they can make. I know that seems a lot low. But for this simple, simple explanation of absolute advantage, we're going to use these numbers. If you want, you can add millions onto that, but we're going to keep it simple. So automobiles or computers, 20 automobiles or 100 computers. And let's compare it to our trading partner, Japan. And they can either produce in one given year 10 automobiles or 200 computers. Taking a look at this right away, you can see that there is definitely an absolute advantage at play here. Canada and its numbers of automobiles versus computers versus Japan and its numbers. Canada can produce in a given year 20 automobiles and 100 computers. Japan, 10 automobiles and 200 computers. Can you see the advantage at play here? I think you can. And so opportunity cost is calculated by bringing one number under the other number. And therefore we're left with the fraction. For Canada, it costs one-fifth of an automobile to produce one computer. For Japan, it costs one-twentieth of an automobile to produce one computer. So it costs Canada a lot more to produce a computer than it does Japan. Do you see where this is going? 
And we can do the same the other way. We can bring the one number automobiles underneath the computers. And therefore, just like before, we're left with a fraction. So to produce one automobile, it costs five or five over one computers for Canada. For Japan, it costs 20 over one or 20 computers to produce one automobile. So it costs Japan a lot more computers to produce one automobile. And therefore, through looking at these opportunity costs of 5 and 1 20th, we can definitely say that Canada should focus on producing automobiles while Japan should focus on producing computers. Each country has an absolute advantage in the product in question. And it's decided based on opportunity costs. Which country has the lower opportunity costs in terms of producing the other good? However, it doesn't always work like that. It's not so easy sometimes, and therefore comparative advantage plays a role now. And this is the other scenario that plays out regarding trade and the economics of trade. And this is, happens when it's all about really those opportunity costs in that one country can produce a good for a lower opportunity cost than the other country. Comparative advantage is really the foundation for specialization and trade because in some scenarios one country is better at producing all goods than the other country. But as a famous economist once said, David Ricardo, that through comparative advantage countries can find a dancing partner. Well, he didn't exactly say that, but you know, you get the idea. And so let's take a look now with two countries. Again, Canada. Same statistics. They can produce 20 automobiles or 100 computers. But now instead of developed country like Japan, we have Niger. And instead of producing all those automobiles and all those computers like Japan did, Niger can only produce 5 automobiles or 40 computers in a year. From looking at this, it looks like Canada has a, an advantage in both goods. And so why should they ever trade with Niger, who can produce far less? Well, again, it comes down to comparative advantage and therefore opportunity costs. Let's take a look. So we'll conduct our opportunity cost calculations again and drag one of the numbers from either product category in, under the other one. And so what we're left with is fractions or opportunity costs. For Canada, it costs one-fifth of an automobile to produce one computer. For Niger, it costs one-eighth of an automobile to produce one computer. So the opportunity cost for Canada is higher than Niger. To do it the other way, drag the automobile number under the computers. We're left with opportunity costs for producing automobiles. And therefore, for Canada, it costs five computers to produce one automobile, just like before. But for Niger, it actually costs eight computers to produce one automobile. So these opportunity costs identify that one country has an advantage in producing automobiles. Through these opportunity cost calculations, we can clearly see each country has a comparative advantage in the production of one good versus the other. For Canada, producing automobiles, it costs five computers. That's far less than the eight that it costs Niger. Whereas for Niger, it costs one-eighth of an automobile to produce one computer versus Canada's number, which was one-fifth. So it's a lower opportunity cost for Niger. And so through these opportunity cost calculations, we can clearly identify each country has a comparative advantage in producing their goods. And so through comparative advantage, we can see that this is actually what's happening in real life. Canada does export nearly $50,000 worth of goods and services to Niger. And so even with a country that's probably one of the least developed countries in the whole world, Canada still trades with them. Why? Because of specialization. Because Niger still has lower opportunity costs in terms of certain goods or services. And vice versa, we import $25,000 roughly of goods and services from Niger. And again, it all boils down to comparative advantage. We're better than Niger producing almost every single good. But with some goods, their opportunity costs are far lower. And thus, we have struck a trade relationship with the country. Well, that brings us to our end of our lecture. Consider this for a second now. I want you to identify three countries that have an absolute advantage in labor. If they have such an absolute advantage in labor, what should we trade with them? Where should we conduct our trade? With whom? All these 
considerations are what the Canadian government takes into account every single year when they strike up trade relationships with countries. And businesses do the same. Right? It's about figuring out who has the lower opportunity costs. And since countries with an absolute advantage in labor definitely has lower opportunity costs than we do, then we should probably try to identify those countries. All right, so make sure your notes are in order. Make sure you have your discussion questions for tomorrow. And that's it. That's all. That's everything. We'll see you tomorrow.